Welcome. Thank welcome, you. welcome. I'm very happy you all are here. We're having just a very short lesson today about color combinations. Can we turn down the music in the background? Thank you. Awesome. So today we're um, talking about color combinations and one of my principles, and some of you may have already read this in the graphic facilitator's guide, and I only have a tiny version of it right now, so I'll just kind of show it to you, is I recommend using color a lot versus using a lot of colors. <laughs> you can actually make more meaning in your drawings when you're more selective in the number of colors you use. So it's a lot about, um, what I say is, when you're using a lot of colors, if you're working with a group and you have a lot of different colors on your chart, every audience member, every participant is trying to make meaning of every one of those colors. And if there isn't consistent meaning being used underlying your process, it causes confusion for them. So it actually is very, very useful to use fewer colors to create more meaning in the long run. So today we're gonna to talk about a principle that is in The Idea Shapers, my second book, and that's the trio. Do, are there anyone here familiar with the trio? Excellent, lots of new learners, welcome. <laughs> so the trio, we're actually borrowing a um, principle from fine art, from visual perception, and it's the idea of atmospheric perspective. So usually when we look at learning perspective, it's where you make the lines go the right directions to make a building look like it's going off in the distance. This is a different kind of perspective. And here I've got a photo that I took in beautiful Bulgaria. And you can see if you're in a large vista, you can see how the horizon looks much lighter. You see how all the color kind of fades out. This is atmospheric perspective. This is what happens because there's just particles in the air that cause this kind of haziness. But this helps us get a sense of depth because of the way the horizon feels far away and lighter. We're gonna do the same thing on our paper. Now just quickly, when I talk about organizing information on a piece of paper, I think of it in two different ways. One is the levels of information, so that's very much what Karina and, and uh, Martin were talking about with scale and hierarchy and structure. That's having big ideas big, small ideas small. Um, so that's an absolutely very important part of organization. Another part, which is what we're talking about today, with the trio, is layers of information. So that's sort of having things pop forward or having things recede. So we're using this same principle that we see in this photo that you see when you have a nice horizon. I'm sure you see it when you look over out at the sea today. Uh, that we want to use contrast in our colors of ink to help certain colors pop forward and certain colors recede. Does that make enough sense for now? You will see it in a moment. All right, so the idea is we are using three colors. So we're choosing a three color palette. And it is exactly the same thing I did here in the drawing I made during our opening session. The idea is that the black is the highest contrast. If you're using white paper, black ink is always going to be the highest contrast to the color of the page. Therefore, that pops forward. Make sense? Good. Um, the lightest color, so in this case, in this trio is yellow. This trio is also the same color yellow. Um, the lightest color is the lowest contrast to the page and it recedes. So that's how we can start creating layers of information in the drawing versus levels of structure and hierarchy. We're having certain items pop forward and certain items recede. Now between those two, we've got this third color that's more contrast than our lightest color and less contrast than our black. So this is giving us sort of a medium tone. So as you can see in this drawing, how they sort of sit on that grid, which color is most forefront is that black, highest contrast, that lightest color, lowest contrast, and then the medium tone in the middle. relationships to yellow as opposed to purple. For sure. And I have some samples I can pass around for that too. Yeah, in this particular case, it's an analogous color scheme because they're next to each other in the color wheel. So that's kind of another aspect of color to look at. Here we're just looking at relative um, lightness or darkness so that we can again pop the most important ideas forward and use certain visual elements that recede in that light color. So let's talk about what the three different functions of these colors are. 
Here's a very small example, but I can also point it out here. And I'm going to take a breath because <laughs> I'm in project projection mode and I'm very overheated. Um, so here is an example that I actually made for one of my lessons. I have a course called the Agerbeck Method. This is three days in the course. Um, this is one day, and it's what is the function of each of those three colors? So I go into a drawing knowing what three colors I'm going to use and what the function is for each of them. Now, a great plus to this is not that you're not just that you're creating these layers, but you're also making these decisions up front, and that helps free up your focus to be more present with the group to be more focused on the content, because you know, go in knowing what each of these is going to do. Okay? So the lightest color, personally, I use for what I call connectors and containers, the things that help create, create connective tissue through a drawing. It's not the, mo the most visually important information. Um, it's very, very useful. It helps give a sense of flow and structure. It's, it's not um, unimportant, <laughs> but it, it's sort of a... Uh, um, secondary to the content itself. So in this case, I've got my main, I, my main concept of succulents, a certain type of plant, and I use a box-shaped container around that in the yellow, and I'm using those little double-walled connectors between my top layer of information, my top level of information, and my second level. So in this particular drawing, I have the levels, because I've got main and supporting, but I also have the layers, because I'm using these connectors those connectors and containers, again, lower contrast color, they recede, right? Black, content. You wanna make sure the content pops forward. Very important. Um, but it's extremely rare that I draw anything else in my drawings in black because I really want le to let the content be its own layer up front. And then I use the green for sort of those levels in between, sometimes like little icons, things like that. Does that make sense? Any questions about those three functions? So sometimes the green might be, in this case, the green might be, and here it's four little uh, thumbnails of these shapes of these plants. It could be if I'm pulling out a theme and I want to kind of create a banner around something. Um, it could be a little model or diagram. It really depends on what the, what the work is. Any questions about those three functions? Does that idea of the contrast make sense? You can kind of see how that work, yeah. I think what happens a lot is, um, and I know for folks who know Bacablo, Bacablo has a lot of black lines. That's a different system. Um, I had somebody ask me recently, like, how do these two fit together? Um, my personal idea, because I think there's definitely different ways of approaching the work, is I really like not letting shapes compete with the words. So here, these yellow shapes and connective tissue, the flow, doesn't compete with the words because they're a separate color, because they're made into a different layer. So just to recognize that some of you who know Bacablo really well are like, wait, how does this fit? They're two different systems. So definitely decide what works best for you. Now, we can see in this drawing that I made this morning, this is three colors. That is, those are only three colors used in, that, in this drawing. I use these three big ones and one number one for some of the smaller lettering but that's all that's on this drawing. But you can see there's still a lot of visual information in this chart. Yeah? <laughs> it's not a simple drawing. Um, and what I did was I made sure that I consistently used certain choices. Now, if you were trying to dissect that into those three categories, this is more complex than that. So don't hurt your brain thinking, wait, this doesn't perfectly match. It doesn't. That's okay. Um, but certainly, I thought about, as I was making this, how am I using each color? But you can see, I've got a lot of things that overlap. And I think a lot of you probably think like, I would never have anything overlap, it's so confusing. But you can see, I see a look of horror. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I do that too. <laughs> okay, yeah, but you can see that if you're, if, if I'm, I put this figure down very early, and you, you know, those who know my work know it's a signature that I love putting people in the work. So I love having a large central figure. Um, but by putting it in that lightest color, it's actually very forgiving. It actually creates sort of this scaffolding, this structure that I can add information to. But because it's that lightest color and it recedes, I can actually overlap on top of it, and it's A-OK. -okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, for instance, I had all of this on the drawing, and then when they came back from break, and they went through these five examples, <laughs> I was like, all right, how, how do I want to represent that? I did have some space here, 
but I did already have this shape. I already had this text. I already had these kind of, you know, this kind of eyesight triangle. Um, I also had this shape back here. So that was, and this was all written in. So I had to think of a different way to use those three colors to create another level of information. So again, layers are going this way or this way, but this was another level of information. And what I did was I made consistent choices across each of these six pieces by making sort of this background container shape with the yellow. I made six pieces, but you understand they hang together because they are consistent across the six. So you can see that we've got one set of information here with the one, the two, and the three, and another set of information here because they're all similar. You can see that there is a comparison between these two types because again, this text is the same as this text. This is parallel to this. These are parallel to these, and these banners are parallel to each other. So again, you actually can make a ton of meaning in a drawing if you're thinking about both the levels of scale and hierarchy and the layers using color. Any questions so far? You with me? This is 20 years of personal drawing experience over 20 years professional drawing experience. So don't panic <laughs> if this seems like a lot. It's a lot of experience. So. Um, I'll pass these around, but it's important that I get these back. Um, this is actually a set of the same drawing drawn in different trios. So in this particular case, I am using these samples uh, specifically with Neuling colors. And here you can see each of the three colors in each of the combinations. So it's a very clear example of each combination and how they work. Does that make sense? Uh, there's one. So some of these are analogous color schemes. So they're colors next to each other on the color wheel. So they have a, a harmony to them. This is an example that it's monochromatic. It's just the lightest purple and a dark purple, but you can actually see that lightest purple might be too light. That lightest purple wouldn't work on a large scale drawing in front of people mm -hmm. if you're using thin lines. So that's an example, but you could do a test like this with these trios to see how they'd work with each other. So. Here's one that's also monochromatic. It's 200 red and 201 dark red. You can see there's not a lot of contrast in this one. They're very, very similar to each other. So you can see you've got kind of the red and then the deep red, dark red. And maybe there's not enough contrast there. They are two different levels. It still is or trio, but you can kind of get a sense of what may be more or less effective to what your objective is. It's always about making meaningful choices given the work you're doing. Uh, here is a really dynamic color scheme. It's more complementary. They're more opposite each other on the color scheme. You've got that beautiful red-orange and that ocean blue. And that's just like a really playful, fun combination, right? You know, if you had a very, very buttoned-up corporate client, this is either going to shake them up or make them crazy. <laughs> you know, like you decide, do you want to fit into what their, their sort of culture color culture may be, or do you actually want to push it? So some days it's about blending in, some days it's about actively sort of pushing against. Um, I think that's a good example. Uh, there's a couple in here too, using, <coughs> excuse me, gray and a bright color. So you can kind of see what that combination looks like. So again, yes, you have, like Nora mentioned, you have different ways that you can organize, and I'll just let you guys pass these around and take a closer look. Just make sure they come back to me, please. Um, you have a lot of choice in what those colors are. So even though you're thinking, look at that gorgeous array of colors, and yes, I own them all, and over time I use almost all of them. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I'm selective in what colors I'm using. So on a specific project, I, I'll know what the company colors are, if there's any colors associated with the event. So for instance, I once had a project that was, um, <clears throat> it was an academic conference and they had this very um, gestural watercolor sort of logo that was like peaches into uh, blues into purple. It was a, like peaches into fuchsia into blues into purple. Of course, I'm thinking from my art background, beautiful analogous color scheme going around the color wheel. I also knew that the project was hosted by New York University whose school color was purple. And because I've been around the block many times, I sense that as they talked about all these different ideas in the wider world, 
that by day three it was going to end up talking about their own campus. So I used that analogous color scheme, but I made sure it ended on their colors. And in this particular setup, we actually had these walls all lined up. So in this case, we can see this gorgeous progression from chart to chart. You don't always have that in the environment, but when you do, it's nice to use it. And then lastly, I'm not saying I never put another color on the chart, but I only bring in a new color if I want to add another layer of meaning. So being selective and deciding, for instance, when I was making this chart, I really was debating with when these five categories came up, I was thinking, man, hmm, maybe I should do like a dark blue. So you could really see that set of five separately. Mm -hmm. But I just personally decided I wanted to keep strictly to the trio for this demonstration. Uh, but again, you're choosing color because it supports the meaning you're trying to make. And that is the trio. Yay. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you.